so I have three main things that I'm going to say tonight and the first one is I want to speak to the young people on Nauru and we want to let you know that we stand with you in solidarity. So although you might not feel it, you are incredibly strong and you are surviving. That is testament to your strength and your resilience. We are sorry for what our government has done. We are sorry. We are working because we want you to have freedom, peace and safety. We want you to be able to grow up in an environment where you can play and learn, where you know you're loved and cared for without any reason at all to be afraid. When we look at you, we see our children. And so just as we want our children to have the best in life that they possibly can, that's what we want for you too. So we are actively working and we will continue to work. We will never stop working to get these children out of detention and in fact to get all people off Manus and Nauru and to close the detention centres permanently. And so to that end, I want us all to, I want to encourage everybody here, if you haven't already, um, there are 30 organisations that have come together and created a campaign called Kids Off Nauru. And the aim is to get all children out of detention on Nauru by International Children's Day on the 20th of November. So if you haven't signed the petition, it, you can just Google it, it's online, you can sign it, you can write to your MP, you can contact Peter Dutton, and we need to tell our politicians, get your act together, come 20th of November, we want all children out of detention. So the second thing I want to say is that in conversation with people from various uh, political affiliations, um, and this is something I suspect other people have noticed too, is that we have a terrible, a terrible but a powerful narrative in our society today. And it says that people from other countries, people with different beliefs, people with different skin colour, they're dangerous. Um, and if we let people in, we're going, they're going to destroy our society, our way of life. And there's this belief that people who are different are a threat. And this is the story that justifies our policies around people seeking asylum. As Frederica was saying before, it's, about, it's not about safety, it's about keeping out people who didn't pay for a visa to come because they couldn't. Now, once upon a time in our history, a group of people did come on boats and violently destroy the society and culture of the time. And that was when the British invaded Australia and proceeded to kill off indigenous peoples, wipe out their language and culture, steal their land, and enforce a different religion and law. So we, and myself, speaking as a descendant of British convicts, um, and, you know, basically colonizers, um, I'm descended, we are descended, some of us are descended from the perpetrators of this thing that our society fears the most. And so, I wonder if our society is worrying that someone else might do that to us because that's what our ancestors did in the same position. So maybe what we really need to do now is to acknowledge the mess that our ancestors made um, and acknowledge that we continue to benefit from and actively participate in the system that they established which continues to this day to disadvantage Indigenous people. So maybe then we can stop collectively projecting our guilt onto people of other ethnicities or religions. Um, so this is not a call to abandon um, the due process of finding out if someone genuinely does need protection when they arrive, but it's a call to just let them arrive in the first place. And it's a call to abandon the old narrative that is holding us back and continuing an us versus them idea. It's a call to abandon a system where racism is not a glitch, but a function. It's a call to embrace people as people, regardless of religion, race, gender, or political affiliation. 
So this brings me, speaking of political affiliation, to my third and final point. Politicians love this fear-mongering. It convinces people to vote for them. It makes them powerful. And it somehow justifies in their minds the horrendous consequences that we are now seeing as a direct result of detention. But we do not accept this. It is not okay to detain people who have not committed a crime. People who come to Australia, whether it's by boat, by plane, or by any other means to seek safety and freedom, have a right to do so. They are not illegal and they are not committing a crime. They have the right to a fair process, not a process which comes down to whoever Peter Dutton feels like allowing into the country. Isn't it convenient that an au pair coming to work for free for a liberal donor is humane and in the country's best interests? Uh, but bringing children to Australia who need urgent medical and psychological treatment is not. Shame. So we say enough. We say that um, allowing children to suffer in detention is child abuse on a systemic level. And we will not sit by and let it happen. Labor and Liberal, your policies are killing people. Do better. Close the offshore detention centres. Bring everyone here because detention does affect children. It does traumatise them and it traumatises adults as well. Separating families traumatises parents and children. Detention is a traumatic event. So bring everybody here. Let the kids, and they're our kids, we are a village for them as well. Let the kids grow up in a safe environment where they can be with family, go to school and have access to the health system. No more offshore.